Hello everyone, welcome to another This Week in the UPSL. You want goals? We've got that. You want action? We have plenty of it. You want inside info? We have that too. And some goalkeeper saves. Let's go UPSL. Let's kick off in the Mountain Conference. Just one game for you here, San Juan FC and Boise Cutthroats. One of my favorite venues in the UPSL. Very scenic, but as you can see, gloves of the order of the day. Getting chilly up there in the winter. San Juan FC, first attack in blue, dipping shot. First goal of the game, Ricardo Velasco for San Juan. And it's another chance here, a little bit of a scramble and it's in the back of the net by Luis Vargas. Quick fire, two goals for San Juan FC. They're gonna get a third here as well. Not great from the keeper and it is the third goal. Boise Cutthroats need to get back into this game and they do with that smart finish by Katanga. And it is 3-1 already. Any more goals? I'm going to have to get the calculator out. The calculator is out. It's another goal for San Juan FC. The number 10, Ricardo Velasco, running rampant. Well, this is getting to be a little bit of a row. I think we need half time here. Boise need to have a word with themselves and sort things out. But that is a good ball into the danger zone. And it's finished off nicely to get one back. Anderson Herrera with the goal into the second half but still that attacking intent from San Juan another goal and it looks like it's out of reach by the cutthroats and from bad to worse the keeper gives away the penalty the other keeper is going to take it it's saved and then over the bar the San Juan FC keeper chance for glory is gone but maybe his teammates will put another one on the board anyway that's good strength into the area and a simple goal another one for the number nine Vargas penalty cutthroats goal very nicely done it's been a long day a long night for the cutthroats that will be it big scoreline here San Juan FC 7 Boise cutthroats 3 the mountain conference there San Juan top one point away from African stars cutthroats in third Lots of action to bring you from the Southeast Conference this week. Let's start with Raleigh International FC and San Lee FC. Beautiful playing service. Um, 10 out of 10 for the groundsman here. And San Lee, I think, getting us underway. Here come uh, International FC. And that is a goal. Cameron Steele with the goal for the home team. Free kick long into the area. That is very, very good goalkeeping by the Riley keeper. We had 10 goals in the other game. This one, 1-0 one in the Mid-Atlantic North. And here are the playoffs in the Mid-Atlantic division. Raleigh do make it in against Moros FC. So does City FC and Charleston on the other side. Jinga Atlanta and LSA Limeño. Now, if I'm right, Jinga Atlanta need to win this game to complete the regular season unbeaten. The invincibles they will be if they can get a win out of this game. Nice little move there. Good shot. That is a phenomenal goal to open the game up for us. I think it's Coloco who scored that goal. That's a good save by the goalkeeper. And it forces a corner for Limeño. And they can't finish it off at the back post. Some desperate defending. And it's a penalty for a handball signaled by the referee. A lifeline for Limeno here. So can Limeno pull one back? They cannot. It's blazed wide by Limeno. You need to take your chances and against Jinga Atlanta because they will goal. score goals. Jeffrey O2 with that one. And I think Jinga can sense that undefeated season and that's giving them a little bit of extra spring in their step. And they want to do this in style. Victor Profit 
<laughs> with the uh, acrobatic celebration. But yep, it's not been Le Menyo's day. Another impressive performance by Jinga Atlanta, and that is the full time whistle. 4 1. Let's hear from uh, Joao Garcia from Jinga Atlanta. Uh, unbelievable, really, would be the word. And to go on, I, I, I tell them it's not even undefeated, it's undisputed. You know, it's yeah. not even one tie. Uh, amazing. They've been amazing, though, day in, day out for, for how many months now, right? Since right. we began, yeah. every day at practice, if it's raining, if it's snowing, uh, we're out there in the morning, we're training, because they, they believe that they're going to reach an objective, and they came together, and they all walked in the same direction, so I think that's uh, it's fruit of all the work that, that they put in. And I'm very happy to be a part of this league and to be able to, to win in our first season in, in Georgia. We, we won a championship in Florida before we moved to Georgia, also yeah. in the first season, so yeah. <laughs> two first seasons, two championships. It's a lot of it's a lot of work and very gratifying because um, it's a lot of people. You know, it's not just it's not just us and them. It's it's their families. It's our families. You know how it is. The sacrifice we put in to, to really be able to work every day. So we're we're more happy for all the support that we have, and, and that brings the success. So. And there it is, the league table, Jingo Atlanta. Pin that one up on your fridge, unbeaten. What an achievement! That was Georgia, this is Florida South, Adrestia and City Soccer FC. Two teams doing quite well in the league and two early chances. Adrestia and a couple of nice smart keeper saves by the City Soccer goalkeeper and that is not a bad stop by the um, Adrestia glovesman. It's all about the goalkeepers, nice tight game. Turns the defender inside out, vicious finish. Can't hit the target, nice touch and a lovely pass by 88. That might be uh, Lawrence for Adrestia. They can't find the finish, but what a ball that was. Into the second half, in behind the defense, and that's a simple tap-in of a finish um, for Esquivel for Adrestia FC. Now, City Soccer trying to find a way back in from distance with these keepers. I don't think that's gonna get you what you need. That's a decent chance missed. City Soccer need to find a goal. Sprung the offside trap, keeper comes charging out, and it's a penalty. Maybe a touch harsh on the goalkeeper, the player was going down anyway, but from the spot it is the equaliser, and Escobar, a little bit of afters there as well, the referee says, get on with it lads. And that's a chance to win the game, blown by City Soccer, 1-1, what a game. Uh, today was a hard fought tie, you know, by a well fought team. Uh, you know, feel like we could have done a little better in executing our goals, myself included. But overall, you know, as a team, we played well. We fought until the end, and we just got to take this result and learn from it and build and come back next game better and stronger. Um, you know, obviously, you always want to come out every night with the three points on top, and, you know, it's football. At the end of the day, any team can win on any given day, so sometimes you just got to take it and get better at it, you know. And hopefully next week we come back with three points. Seen some goals go inside the net, but it's time for us to go inside the club. This week, we are off to Northern Virginia. Talk to uh, Northern Virginia United FC's Brian Welsh. Um, we created the, the club in January 2018. Um, and it was to, we originally we entered the, the NPSL, um, which basically you play in the, the summer. Um, and it was to give some of the, the young kids or, or some of the younger college kids a place to play in the summer. Um, since then, um, we've went on and obviously joined the UPSL. Um, we've got access to a load of uh, good young players. Um, and we wanted a little bit more than just playing in the summer. So that was our reasons for joining the UPSL. Um, and what we've found with the UPSL is this, the, the competition for, the, for our young kids has been really, really good. Um, and that'll help them develop as players. I think to help um, some of the young talent to go further in the game, you know, they feel there's probably limited opportunities. 
Um, we've been fortunate in the two years that um, we've managed to send four players um, to, the, to pro, you know. Um, and for that, that's what it's all about for us. It's been really, really good. Um, we, what, what we found, we ended up winning the, the league. We got beat on the, the playoff final, but we won the regular league. Um, as I say, we've got a young team, so I think we lost our first game, um, drew our second game, and then we went unbeaten after that. Well, I think only one draw and maybe seven wins. So, I mean, it takes up a hell of a lot of my time, you know. Um, I end up doing the kit, um, loads of things, you know, but it's, it's rewarding. It's rewarding um, and it's good to be, I've been involved in the, in the pro game all my life, so it's good to have my own club and, and be able to, to do things the way that I want to do, you know. Wrapping things up this week in the Central Conference. We have one game, San Antonio Surf and Houston FC, a little bit of a Battle of Texas going on here. In the all blue is the Surf. Trying a quick attack, the first time pass, the second time of asking, they work it into the box well. Good save, can't hold on to it. And it's goal for Dominic Small. One nil to the Surf. Can you surf in Texas? I need to find that out. Um, Houston FC with a chance there and here come the surf again they play some nice football and again it just wriggles away from the goalkeeper has he done enough now the referee is given it and it's a second goal for Dominic Small San Antonio surf playing some lovely stuff here missed interception and that's another great goal no offside and Devonte Small the second of the smalls getting that goal and it's a long way back for Houston FC now. Particularly if that one goes in, well, it hits the bar. Still loose, and it's another goal. Uh, Braden Lennon getting in amongst the smalls for a goal. It'd be nice if Houston could grab a consolation, and this might be it. Good alertness. He deserves a goal for this, and he's going to get it. It's one for Houston, but I think it's too little too late. That's a nice ball over the top. That's a lovely chip. And uh, probably sealing this game is Devonte Small. Two each for the Smalls. Braden Lennon with the other goal for San Antonio Surf. 5-1. And that's the table. Houston FC, despite that loss, are top. Capital City Soccer Club in second. top scorers we are counting regular season only for the goals and it's still a tie between Daniel Shiani and Akinney James Dion McCauley stuck one goal behind him well we might be counting down the days to Christmas but the only countdown we have for you now is the top goals presented by score united by the uniform six goals for you this week a little whip around starting with Forest Rovers Alonso Millsap it comes to Alonso in the middle of the park, lashes it from distance. That's a great goal. And number five on the list, Tulsa Athletic Project 2020. Not, not a friend of the commentators, but Project 2020 score some good goals. Where's this going to go? A header from there. You never see it. What a great goal by uh, Kevin Quirtang. Number four. I saw this one just now. San Antonio surf. Lovely ball over the top of the defence. Plenty to do for the finish there. But Small does get it home. Number three on the list. Iñaki Barroso. Miami Sun. The free kick. Quality player. Seen him play a few times. And that one is a beauty. Number two then. Jinga Atlanta just makes the space for himself and curls it home beautifully in that impressive win for Jinga. That meant they went unbeaten. 
And top of the list, number one, the San Juan FC, Ricardo Velasco. And it doesn't get much better than that, does it? Takes one touch, picks his spot, picks his moment, sends it over the goalkeeper. That is the top of the list. UPSL's top goals, presented by SCORE. United by the uniform. Well, that is it for this week in the UPSL. Thank you for joining us. Follow us around the internet at UPSL Soccer, all the usual social networks. Don't forget to log on to myQju.tv. Search for UPSL. Find a game to watch. See you next week. <laughs>